Hello and welcome to the presentation on Kirchhoff's Current Law, Kirchhoff's Voltage Law and EMF. This is primarily aimed at A-level students, but if you're a bright GCSE student looking to stretch yourself, it's worth a watch. Uh, meet my friend Kirchhoff and my other friend Ohm. Okay, let's start with a few basic definitions. Current is the number of coulombs of charge per second. Um, a coulomb of charge is a lot of electrons, so think of it like uh, the way we talk about uh, the flow of water. We'd say litres per second. We don't need to say the number of molecules of water per second. So the current in this circuit is 1.5 coulombs of charge per second, and as you can see, everywhere in the circuit, the current is the same. The voltage is a measure of something else. That's the amount of joules of energy per coulomb of charge. Now, voltage has another name, which is potential difference, and this literally means the potential energy difference per uh, coulomb of charge either side of any component that you are measuring across. So this cell is providing 15 joules per coulomb, and um, because the wires have very low resistance, you can see that no energy is being lost, hence the voltmeter reading of zero here, here, but not here, because now we're measuring across the bulb. So 15 joules gets dropped on the bulb. Subscribe then. Adding another bulb in the circuit allows us to explore some other options. Adding another bulb doubles the resistance because resistors in series add up. Um, we can use Ohm's law to calculate the current, which is V equals IR. Rearrange for I gives us V over R. And uh, since there are two resistors, uh, each at 10 ohms, that adds up to 20 ohms. And the current comes out at 0 0.75 amps. So that's Ohm's law. What about Kirchhoff's law? Well, Kirchhoff's voltage law to be specific. So the potential difference across this cell is 15 volts. Um, and if we go around the circuit, across this little bit of wire, it's zero volts. Across this bit of wire, it's zero volts. But across this bulb, it's 7.5 volts in magnitude. Um, across both bulbs, we're back to roughly 15 volts. And across this single bulb, bulb we're at 7.5 volts. So Kirchhoff's um, voltage law states that uh, the sum of the voltages, if you go around a closed loop in the circuit, will add up to zero. So we saw that the voltage across the cell was 15 volts. Okay, And the voltage across each of the bulbs was 7.5 volts. Now if we go around this circuit in the anti-clockwise direction, starting at the positive side of the cell, counting the 15 volts as negative, and then because we come across the positive 7.5 and another positive 7.5, as positives, they all add up to zero, demonstrating Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now, as a consequence of Ohm's law, the um, joules per coulomb of charge dropped on each component depends on its resistance. So in this circuit, if I double the resistance of one of the bulbs, um, they both initially started with the same resistance, so that bulb becomes two-thirds of the total resistance of the circuit. It then therefore takes two-thirds of the total voltage of the total circuit, or total potential difference. Um, making both um, bulbs the same resistance again, and we get back to the same sharing ratio of 50-50, because each of 50% of the total resistance of the circuit. Notice that the current, though, has dropped down drastically, as the resistance of the entire circuit is now much higher. Setting um, the resistor on the left back to 10, and this resistor now to um, 40 ohms, I can now say that this is... 40 out of 50 ohms, and 40 out of 50 is 80%. So I get 80% of the voltage on bulb number 2 and 20% on bulb number 1. Now let's have a look at a useful way of imagining what's happening to the charges um, as they gain energy um, in a parallel circuit. So we can imagine a water pump um, scenario or some kind of pump pushing whole charges around a circuit. The pipe narrowing indicates a resistance. The narrower the pipe, the greater the resistance. Now to avoid a common misconception, um, in a wire the electrons are throughout the wire to start with. So even though the drift velocity of electrons when you have a current flowing is very low, um, the impact of pushing one electron along um, is almost instantaneous at the end of the wire because they're all connected. So now we're going to imagine that each of these charges has been given four joules of energy. Right, so they're leaving the cell with four joules of energy um, and they're coming back with zero joules of energy. So if you was to put a voltmeter across the cell or the pump in this analogy, 
you'd have a reading of a potential difference of 4 volts. Now we can see as the um, charges make their way through the first resistance, they've dropped off 2 joules of energy to make it through that barrier. And you can imagine the voltmeter asking its left leg how many joules of energy do the charges have, and the answer would be 4. How many joules to the right hand on the right hand leg do they have, and that's 2. And when you subtract them, you have a difference, potential difference in energy per coulomb of charge of 2 volts. Um, exactly the same thing for the second voltmeter, but this time the left leg asks and it gets an answer of 2, the right leg asks and gets an answer of 0, and the difference is 0. Um, this voltmeter would be asking um, how many on the left, and that's 4, how many on the right, and that's 0, and the difference is 4. A voltmeter placed anywhere else, um, as long as it's not across a component here, it would be uh, 0 joules of energy minus 0 joules of energy, which would be 0 joules of energy again, or 0 joules of potential energy difference per coulomb of charge across Oi, what I'm changing. wake up! Okay, now we get to see another example of Kirchhoff's uh, great ideas, and he noticed that the, um, the sum of the currents entering a node is equal to the sum of the currents exiting that node. So that's known as Kirchhoff's current law, or Kirchhoff's first law. Kirchhoff's voltage law still applies on the closed loops. This cell is set at 15 uh, volts, and if you was to um, follow th uh, the first loop around, you'd find that the voltage added up to zero, and similarly with the second loop. Now let's get back to another series circuit. So this time I've put two resistors in series, much like we've seen before, with a switch as well. Um, placing the voltmeter across just the cell, we can read 15 volts. Um, and when we place it across this resistor right next to the cell, we're getting 7.5 volts or minus 7.5. Um, and another 7.5 volts across this resistor, suggesting that both resistors are identical in value. In fact, they're both set at 10 ohms. Now, when I open the switch, the voltage reading jumps up to 15 volts. Um, this is because I'm essentially reading the voltage of just the cell on its own. When this switch is open, practically no current is flowing. The voltmeter has an almost infinite resistance. The voltmeter is in series with the um, resistance which, is, which we're looking at next to the cell. Um, so since it's nearly infinite in its resistance, it takes nearly um, percentage-wise all of the joules per coulomb of uh, energy delivered by the cell. So in fact what you're reading is the EMF, the definition of the EMF being the number of joules of energy given to each coulomb of charge that pass through the cell. Now we're going to imagine that someone has drawn a red box around the cell and the resistor and they're not allowing us to take any measurements um, from there. Um, this would mean that apart from just disconnecting uh, all the components in the circuit, we wouldn't be able to measure the EMF directly. So in order to measure the EMF, what we could do is we could increase the resistance of the external resistor progressively, um, and the larger that external resistance got, the closer that resistance would be to um, the EMF of the cell. So here I've got up to 50 ohms, and I'll speed up. So the voltmeter was originally reading 7.5 volts and now we're at 12.857 and it's going to continue to go up. Um, but you would still be wondering where is the additional voltage? When you put the voltmeter on your on the uh, red box, either side of it, you're getting, uh, with no other components in the circuit, you're getting 15 volts. But when you put a component into the circuit, you get less than this. You seem to have lost some volts. Okay, so let's dive into some analysis. Um, the EMF of the cell, which we can't get at because it's trapped in that red box, um, is going to be the total voltage of the circuit. And if the total voltage all the way around the circuit adds up to zero, then the EMF would be equal to the voltage that's lost on that small resistance plus the voltage that is recorded across the external resistance. So stating um, Kirchhoff's voltage law, um, but rearranging a bit, we could say that the voltage total would be equal to V1 plus V2, in this case because there's only two voltages to measure because there's two components. So the voltage total would be the EMF of the perfect cell, um, and it should be equal to the lost volts plus the voltage across the component we're measuring here. Now since um, the current is equal everywhere in the circuit, um, we could say that 
using Ohm's law, V equals IR, the voltage across all these little resistors, all these separate resistances, is equal to IR. So um, for the lost volts, that would be I multiplied by little r. That's the symbol used for the resistance that normally we say is inside the cell. And the, um, the external resistance, we usually use the symbol big R. Um, so we can rephrase this again as EMF equals I, uh, open brackets, uh, R, little r, little r, big R. Okay, so now let's repeat the process. This time I'm going to um, set up the situation whereby the cell actually has an internal resistance. So I'm going to set it as a low internal resistance. Usually cells have a low internal resistance. The internal resistance is actually the resistance due to really the... You can't just generate current um, up to an infinite level. So if you had a superconductor attached to a cell, you wouldn't have an infinite current because the cell itself has to go through chemical reactions to produce that current. So it does have a, um, a resistance. Now we're seeing the terminal voltage when the, the switch is open is 15 volts, but when closed is 13.636. So now I'm able to go in and change the resistance of the external resistor whilst measuring the terminal voltage and collect values for the uh, terminal voltage and the current consecutively to uh, get a data set which I'll be able to plot on a graph. Okay, so finally we have plotted a graph. We have voltage on the y-axis and uh, current on the x-axis. So if we compare that to the formula we had for EMF, which was uh, EMF equals I times uh, internal resistance plus the external resistance, Try not um, to we fall can asleep restate now. that as uh, open up the rackets basically, I times little r plus I times big R. Since Ohm's law is I times R is equal to voltage, the I times the little r is going to be the loss volts, and the I times the big r is the uh, terminal voltage you record across the external resistor. So we can just replace that with V. Um, that's not E. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, subtract IR from both sides of the equation. So e, EMF minus IR equals V. And now we can compare that to Y equals MX plus C. So I'm doing it in reverse here, which looks a bit confusing, but it's not too bad. So the plus C is actually the EMF, since the y-axis is um, the uh, voltage, the EMF is um, the intercept on the y-axis, 15 volts, which we know to be true. The gradient of the graph is the R, and it will actually be negative. Um, we could flip around the IR bit if you wanted to see that. Um, and the X we know is current because that's what we plotted. So I hope you found this video helpful and useful. If you have done, please comment, like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching.